What's up guys, I am back and if you guys are curious how to remove the turbos from your RB26 with the turbos or with the engine still in the car, that's what we're going to do in today's video. So, um, the factory service manual says you need to remove the engine, which I know is not true because up garage and university place, Doug and Eric remove turbos all day long with the engines in the car. So to get the video started today, I've already removed the under tray and drain the coolant out of the system so I don't have all the water lines leaking. So let's go ahead and start with removing all the intake piping and all the charge pipes. And then after those are out, we'll get underneath, remove the down pipe, and then get to the turbos. And the Sylvia is still over here chilling. I got some parts back from the Packard Carter this week. Turned out really good. Radiator brackets and some other brackets in the engine bay. Put a prop. And I'm gonna do my best job to show every little level of detail that you guys need because there's really no videos that I can find on the internet on this. taking off this intake tube right here so you gotta use your extension to get down below. There we go. So by removing all this internal stuff here, that's gonna give us access to the charge pipe that comes off the rear turbo so we can get this off, pull this whole section out. And this last one, I just used a long socket and it'll just slip right back behind this braking unit and you can usually get right in there. EBS, kind of tight, but this is like the third time I've taken this whole system off. So it's, this is the order that I usually take it on and off in. I think it's the easiest. The rear turbo on the front, just be careful when you remove that because there's a nut underneath. And if you just unscrew that all the way, the nut falls off down and, and below. So you're gonna wanna stick your hand kind of back behind you here and hold it and take it off with the other hand. All right, so this took me about 20 minutes to get to this point here. So this is kind of what we're gonna be looking at. Um, you can see we've got some oil blow-by issues still. See oil in there. And signs of it still in here after I've cleaned all that out. So still was leaking. Uh, but we've got a an oil uh, catch can or Nismo oil separator coming. So we'll probably get that installed into the rear turbo and have it drain and everything. So we're not going to have to deal with that again. Um, but at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and get underneath and take off the downpipe. Okay, so underneath, this is the downpipe or the front pipe, as they call it in Japan. So I've got all the hardware PB blasters on there. So I'm going to kind of soak in. Then I'm going to torque all these off. i got to take off the uh, O2 sensor that's in the downpipe as well. Remove this so I can have access to all the water lines and everything. All right, I've got three of the four off. The one that I hate the most is this one because the angle of the downpipe right here from the front turbo is just kind of in the way. I wish you would have just bent this just a little bit. It's just so tight, it's hard to get a socket on it and get a good angle without stripping it. So what I was able to do here is just use a swivel extension. If you guys could see that. And I was able to get right in there so this is the first place you'll need a swivel. Okay, 
Okay, so we're roughly about an hour in. It took me about 30 minutes or so to remove the downpipe and disconnect the uh, uh, exhaust sensor and the cap. So, um, looks like we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna remove this uh, upper line first. Um, so yeah, let's get this off and then that'll give us access to get down here a little easier and then we can work all this stuff out and then I'll start taking off the exhaust uh, manifold covers and we'll just keep working our way down. Start at the top, work your way down just like with a beautiful woman. And then this is the instructions. So we're gonna we're gonna loosen uh, A and B first, A and B, and then we're lo loosen C D, remove B. So we're gonna follow these steps. Here we go. All right. So by loosening this back one here or the front one, that'll give us more leverage. Got to get a 24 mil socket on this, loosen it up. Disconnect the vacuum line from the front biscuit actuator and then the rear one, and then we can get this up and out. Put it in our pile of stuff. Let's keep going. All right, so we've got the vacuum line out. Next, I'm gonna take off this, uh, there's a 12 mil bolt that secures the front water line here. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out of there. We're gonna get the leverage to get that flare nut off. You gotta put a, like a crescent wrench here, and then you can uh, kind of hold that as you uh, torque that thing loose. So let's get that off. Oh, we got a bracket right here that holds this main hub on there so I'm gonna loosen that off just to make sure I get enough play so I'm loosening that I'm not potentially damaging any threads okay now we can get this water line off using these water bracket lines it looks like there is a screw or a bolt down there that bracket on. We're gonna take that off. As you can see down there, I pretty much got it off here. See why Up Garage charges so much for this job because it is a pain in the ass. They charge uh, around, depending on what you're doing, sixteen hundred to two grand. All right, and there's a second screw on this bracket or nut right here. You gotta get both those off in order to get the heat shield off. So you gotta move that bracket out of the way. And we can get this bracket out of the way. So this is where I've been kind of stuck, is this water line coming off the turbo. And what I figured out to finally get into this area and loosen it up, it's adjustable. And then I was able to get that down in here at the correct angle. So if you don't have a set of these, you're gonna need them. So go ahead and buy it before you try the job. But anyway, I was able to loosen it up that way and finally get this off because I've been stuck here for a little bit. I 
go. Here, let's go loosen some water lines on the front turbo. Got a swivel on here. You can see I've got my extension in there and it goes on there pretty easy. It's just a swivel extension. Let's try and get a shot at that for you. So it's 18 mil in the back and 16 mil in the front. So today is day two. I needed to buy some tools yesterday, so I couldn't continue. So I needed to go get some uh, crow's feet floor nut wrenches. And the reason why is there is just no way for me to get the leverage that I needed to um, get that water line off. See if I can get a good shot on it for you guys. Where's it at? Uh, right there. So I got the, uh, the the crow's foot flare nut uh, 17 mil fit on there perfect and you can see that it's kind of stuck on there so once I twist it off once so I got that on there and I was able to just easily uh, break that free so let's get that done and continue so this was my setup right here just a 3 8 socket wrench with that crow's feet 17 mil flare nut wrench popped right off so if you don't have a set of these you're going to need them so go ahead and buy it before you try the job All right, I'm gonna get some PB Blaster all over all of these uh, bolts and nuts. Now that we got that water line off from the turbo, we can get the front uh, water line off because it was blocked before, so let's take that out. Pretty easy angle with the swivel. Easily get it on there, 17 mil. Okay, so both the water lines from the rear turbo and the front turbo are disconnected. Okay, so this is pretty simple how it works. So you have your, this smaller one is actually the oil line in. Um, so this comes down in a round turbo, if anybody's unfamiliar with this. And it feeds into the top of the turbo right here, so we don't have to disconnect that, it stays on there. So that's actually really easy. And then the oil output after it goes through the center cartridge, comes out here through the drain line. And then this is your water input. So that goes through this big feed here and goes around into here 
and drains. I think it drains here. It's, it's either there or there, I'm not sure, but you have input and output for water. So those are all disconnected. So the only thing we really have to disconnect here, it's just the oil drain line from the bottom and then we should be good to go. I might have to grab my GoPro to kind of get this, but you guys can see that's the oil uh, drain right here. So that drains out of the turbo, goes back into the, uh, the oil pan. So let's get a, looks like that's a six mil. Let's get a six mil socket and take that off and then loosen all the bolts on the manifold and see if we can slowly pull that out. What I was worried about underneath here is I was looking at all these water lines trying to figure out where those go. And those are the oil and water uh, lines that are at the very top there that we uh, disconnected. Where are they? Right there. So those lines there feed into all these lines over here. So you don't have to disconnect those. That's what I was worried about because that looks like that would have been a big pain in the butt. So this should be pretty easy. Socket on this is six mil. So there we go. It's all disconnected. Let's uh, go to the top. All right, let's loosen all the manifold nuts and lock washers. So we have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six on each side. And then we should be able to pull that entire assembly out here. Let's give it a shot. them all because I don't want to put any uh, unequal pre unequal pressure on the ones that aren't loose making them harder to get off all right so you need like some swivel extensions let's go ahead and get this uh, this back one down here off Moving the turbo and manifold all out in one piece because Eric at Up Garage, that's how he says he uh, does the uh, deinstallation. But there is one nut down there. You can easily just slip a wrench down here, fits right over it. There we go, so we can get this loosened up. There we go, ratchet wrench is on here. And I decided to go ahead and loosen all these uh, nuts on the uh, exhaust manifold to the turbo to give me a little bit of wiggle room. So as I'm maneuvering around, that'll give me a little bit of play. I'm not gonna take it all the way off because I don't wanna risk damaging the water lines underneath and having it fall on those. So that'd be expensive to repair. So ratchet wrench down there as well to dismount that nut down there. And the only one I'm having trouble with is that one there. So I'm gonna figure it out. Figured out that last one that I was trying to get that last exhaust nut. So I was able to get the ratchet wrench on there and just tap the nut loose. That's a slow process. We're going one click at a time. Okay, so to easily loosen all these, uh, I talked to Eric at Up Garage. He says he uses like swivel uh, quarter inch extensions. You can easily get all the stuff off if you have swivels so and get good angles on everything. Uh, this is quarter inch swivel stuff, so you have enough room to manipulate it around. So 
lock watcher. I borrowed these tools from my neighbor. This is a wobble socket so you can really get into those tight areas. I didn't even know that this existed. I thought that these are all you had. It was like swivel socket extensions. So with the combination of that and this, you can pretty much get anywhere. But this is the moment of truth. I've got all the lock nuts and nuts and lock washers, everything off. Let's go ahead and remove this turbo. Let's keep our fingers crossed. This is my first attempt. I'm not a master mechanic. I consider myself like an intermediate mechanic. I'm being careful because I've got these water lines right next to the turbo. I'm just a little hung up on the water lines and the oil lines down here, so I'm trying to carefully move those out of the way. is incredibly tight. Oh. So you can see, this is what we were hung up on down there. Just trying to get it to slip around that. I didn't want to bend these too much, but if you're wondering if it's possible to get it off, yes, it all comes off in one piece. So here we go. The R600s, let's uh, work on disconnecting the oil line on the rear one and then we'll pull that bad boy out and we're off to up garage. Let's separate the exhaust manifold from the turbo and then I need to take the downpipes off too so I can get these turbos back to up garage. I'll just make sure I take off my water line fittings and the oil drain fitting. Gasket, OEM, I bought new ones from Nissan, so we should be good to go there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just switch over these oil and water uh, banjo bolts, or the, whatever these bolts are called, I think they're banjo bolts. I'm just gonna put them on my stock turbos, so I uh, can kind of keep everything together. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the nuts from the downpipe, so I can get the downpipe off and get this front turbo stripped all the way down. There we go. OEM downpipes off. Turbo is mostly stripped down. Last thing I need to take off is this front right here. Let's get this oil drain off. And this is just a uh, eight millimeter deal. Get this uh, front inlet pipe into the compressor housing out. And then this is pretty much disassembled and ready to go back. Because all my old lines and everything, depending on what comes with those TR500 turbos, I can swap all the lines from there. All 
All right, I'm gonna start working the rear one and let's get all these bolts loosened. This is so much easier having that front turbo off. It easily gets all this stuff. Once I have all these loose, I'll use my swivel socket and get in there and get them all wrenched off. Pretty cool, you can get all these back ones just from the bottom, having that accessibility. We'll get our socket in there and pull them all out. Let me get all the under ones off just with the 12 mil uh, ratchet or ratchet wrench. Works really easy to get down in here. Has a little better perspective of, of how tight it is down there. So I'm on that back nut. And then we have like about a two to three click. Quick tip, what I did is just used a flathead screwdriver to hold the wrench onto the nut as I was uh, ratcheting it off. I don't want to say it keep falling off like every two seconds, which was really annoying. All right, so we're underneath here at the rear turbo. I've got the uh, Close clamp loosen for the oil drain feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and pry that off with a straight head screwdriver and pull the turbo up. Before you get started on this, make sure you get your oil and water lines uh, tucked out of the way underneath. So I got them off to the side. So as I pull the turbos out, they'll just rise up and away. Things are heavy. And I went ahead and ordered a brand new set of wobble sockets in metric, both in 3 8 and quarter inch. That way when I do the reassembly, these would have made the deinstallation process so much easier. And then I got some uh, 
flex extensions as well for bending around corners just for getting stuff kind of started in three eighths and quarter inch. But I'll have a link in the description of all the tools that I used on this uh, turbo deinstallation. So if you guys uh, want to pick those up, I'll have a link in the description for Amazon. So here's a good look at them. And as far as flexibility, I mean, you can see if you pair this up with a swivel socket and a wobble socket with normal extensions, you should be able to get to all angles on those exhaust manifolds. That's what took the most time. That was the biggest pain. So instead of sitting there with a bunch of ratchet wrenches like I was, these should make the job doable much easier. And this is the way Eric does it from up garage. Guys, if you were wondering if it is possible to be done, it is possible to be done all at home in your garage without a lift with the engine in the car with just basic hand tools so if you guys like this video give me a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel this is the kind of stuff that i like to do working on my car in my garage i'm a family man with a budget i can't afford to pay a shop to do all the labor for me i have to do it myself and uh, if you guys like that type of stuff i hope this video helped you because there's really no video that i can find in great detail that showed you how to remove turbos so i should be the first as far as i know but anyway uh, i will see you guys next time i'll be back with another video i still have to finish stripping this turbo out getting it tore down so it looks like this one i've got this one all cleaned up so it's ready to go and be returned to up garage this took me about eight hours from start to finish like i said the biggest hang up was not having the right tools so if you can learn anything from this video, get wobble sockets, get some uh, crow's feet, and with those, you should be able to conquer this task. If I could do it again, it would probably take me about, I'd say, three to four hours. I really wish I would have had all this information because I would have loved to save myself all the time and frustration and everything that I went through dealing with this job. But that's all part of the growing pains and owning a GTR. I really enjoyed making this video. I had a blast. I've got the uh, old manifolds, new manifolds, all the old stuff just sitting there, ready to put it back together. Like I said, I'm waiting for that uh, Nismo catch can. So once I get that, we'll put in the DR500s. This looks so nice. And the exhaust inlet was kind of honed out with the die grinder to fit the tow maze. But uh, anyway guys, subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you guys thought of the video. I'd appreciate it. Like I said, hit that thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. If that's the only way you support my channel and my hard work, I really appreciate it. It means a lot. But until next time guys, I'll see you. Have a good one.